So today I'm talking about a Toyota with the P1349 code, what it is and how you could go about fixing it. And so what is a Toyota P1349 code? Well, it's a variable valve timing system malfunction bank one. And so what does this mean? Well, basically modern vehicles have what's called variable valve timing, which can adjust the timing of the engine while it's running. And this has many benefits. It can give the engine better performance, better fuel mileage and things along these lines. But when you get this P1349 code, the computer's seen a problem with this system. And so it's gonna have to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, the engine's gonna have two banks. Bank one side of the engine is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder, and the opposite of that is bank two. So if you locate the number one cylinder on that engine, since there can be differences between engines, then that side of the engine is gonna be bank one. And when you get this P1349 code, that's the side of the engine the computer's gonna be seeing a problem with. And one thing to note about these variable valve timing systems is that they can be named differently. Toyota usually calls its system variable valve timing intelligence or VVTI. But just keep in mind that they can't be designed differently. They could have different names. Components could be named differently and things along these lines, depending on the year, the make, the model, and so on. And so what would be some possible causes of a Toyota with the P1349 code? Well, the first thing that could cause this is low or dirty engine oil. Engine oil flows through all the variable valve timing components. And if it's low or if it's really dirty, then this can cause problems. So the first thing to do, if possible, is go and check the engine oil and be sure that's good. The next thing that could cause this is a bad variable valve timing component, such as the solenoid or the actuator. There's going to be a solenoid on each cam of the engine. There's also going to be what's called an actuator on each cam of the engine. And the actuator is what the timing chain or timing belt rides on. And the solenoid and the actuator work together to control the timing. Because there's some different ways to go about testing these components. If you have a multimeter, you can go and test those solenoids. Look up what the rated resistance values are for those solenoids. And then go and check them and be sure they're good. There's some good videos on how you go about testing these components. Another thing to mention that dependent on the system, there can be a small little filter that's inside of there. And if that gets clogged up, then that can also cause problems. And again, be sure to get a diagram for your specific vehicle. That way you know for sure what's going on. But if there is one of these little filters in there, they get clogged up, it stops the flow of oil, and that causes problems. But the next thing that could cause is that there's some kind of issue with the variable valve timing component. And the next thing that could cause this is any kind of wiring problems going to the variable valve timing, mainly to the solenoids. If that variable valve timing solenoid, if the wiring going to it has it open, short, anything like this, then that's going to cause problems. Of course, usually if that happens, you're going to get another code. If this includes like the actuator or things like that. Usually if those do have a problem, you get another code. Like for example, this P0026 intake valve control solenoid circuit range performance bank one. If you're also getting this code, then it's a good idea to go check out that solenoid, the wiring going to it, be sure that's good. So if you are getting any other codes, be sure to pay attention to that. But the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring problem. And the next thing that could cause this is some kind of bad timing component. And this would be something like a bad timing chain, timing belt, tensioner, something along those lines. These timing chains and timing belts, they all have timing marks on them. And if these timing marks, if they get off, for example, say a timing belt slips a little bit and the mark is a little bit before, a little bit after, then that's going to cause problems and it's going to throw everything off. Also, when timing chains or timing belts, when they get old, they can become stretched out. So when the engine's running, that can just throw everything off sometimes. There's also going to be a tensioner that keeps everything tight. And if the tensioner has a problem and it's not keeping everything tight, then that can also cause issues. But the last thing on the list is going to be a bad timing component. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing the Toyota with the P1349 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.